a song like Cousins, which starts with that um, intense drumbeat starting off, was that something that you put into it, Chris? Or where did, where did that come from? Uh, the Cousins beat, which is still something I'm a little annoyed at myself for writing because it's, it's becoming more and more difficult to play, especially in, later <laughs> in shows. Um, but no, that was something where I believe it started off as like a, more of a, the chorus was like a slow thing that Ezra had on piano or some key thing. And then the guitar, opening guitar like was a sound check thing that we've been <laughs> doing kind of during the first album tour. And then uh, in classic My Drum style, I just played something. And if it worked, it worked. If it didn't, it didn't. And that seemed to work. I think Bayo said, oh, no, that works. <laughs> I thought it was kind of dumb or something. I don't know. Um, and, uh, and yeah, yeah. So, so that kind of built up through a few different ways. And then we put it together. And, um, and yeah, like I said, I mean, that's, I think that's one of my coolest parts, but also one of the most annoying because it's the most demanding. It's a, it seemed like it would be really hard. We're not playing that tonight, so <laughs> <laughs> that's good. The, um, uh, when you're practicing then and you need to turn it into not just something that's recorded on the album, is it difficult to prepare these things to, go, to be live? Some more than others. I think the ones that, that build up kind of more in the studio and, and parts are added and oftentimes m many songs are re recorded without any, uh, not regard, but without any concern to how we perform them live. Yeah, there are several electronic songs, at least a couple of them on the, on the album that, you know, struck me. I didn't know how you were going to play it live. I saw you in Boston play it and it was... It, it, it had a different sound in order to make it work well. Live. And I feel like sometimes those are, I think, some of the better moments in the show is like a song like I Think You're a Contra or a song like Taxi Cab, uh, which are very different from the, the, the classic, as Ezra said, Bring It to the Guys setup, <laughs> um, you know, where we had to, like, where Bayo really, you know, learned how to do the upright bass and I learned how to hit a drum sampler pad. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, you know, but yet different, different textures, I think, gave our show more of, a, of an arc and I think you know, as they came up as a recording, you know, that's in the back of your mind, but then you kind of figure it out, you know, when you need to figure it out. Do you guys have a hard time trying to write songs as a group of four people together? Is there conflict or is it pretty smooth and you sort of have worked out your ways that you sort out when one person wants to pull in one direction and another person wants to pull in another? Well, I think ultimately we all are primarily concerned with just making the best album possible, and of course... And no one ever has different ideas about what that might be, never. Right, no, no, but that's the thing. Every, people do have different <laughs> ideas, and yet I think for a band to function, and it's something that I think we develop and that we talk about a lot, and, it, and it's, it's not always easy, and, um, but for, for a band to function, there has to more or less be some consensus on what are the strengths of the band, what what a good what what could what a good album feels and sounds like and also there has to be a degree of trust in um you know trust in each other so when i think you know we've it's have developing that developing that trust and our ability to kind of talk about the directions the band's heading in musical ideas it's allowed us to kind of make the transition even from our first album to our second album um I think if the the four of us weren't open to ideas of change, bringing new instruments, like flipping things around, we couldn't have even made our second album, Contra. So having developed that, it's something we can always refine and work on together, but uh, it allows us to to kind of like move together. And that doesn't mean that everybody's always going to have the exact same idea of what the next album will be like, but it, it affords us a degree of kind of openness that that kind of nothing's sacred. It's, it's, um, it's not like the Rolling Stones. There's no knockdown, drag out fights over, over what you will end up wanting to do. Chris, you don't end up um, uh, uh, wanting to pull in one direction, the other's in the other, and then it takes three days to get you guys back in the same room together. No, we've never had anything like that. <laughs> I mean, How we've had some words in the sea. I mean, like, it's, it's funny that it never it tends not to come out as anger often but i can say one thing about all of us and i think this is what makes us hopefully like good and functional as a band is that we do feel music very emotionally and the best thing is when everybody's on the same page about that and maybe we're united against a common enemy or something we all hear something we all have like that kind of weird sick feeling there's something wrong with it there's something off about it but um it also 
a lot, you know, if, we, if we're all honest about it, there, there is something to be said about if somebody hears a song and they get like a weird feeling, you know, and I've certainly, you know, had this with Rossum and I think vice versa that, you know, if when, when one person feels like there's something that's just like really, really corny and it makes them feel weird when they hear it, <laughs> as much as maybe one of us hoped that the song was done or hoped that it was fine, you always have to like take that seriously. And I think that's the strength of a group of people having a, you know, rather than working just by yourself, is that there is always somebody to kind of check you. And I've always found that with a lot of times when I'd write lyrics to a song, I'd always know that there was one part that was very, I knew was weak, but I always kind of hoped could just like slide under the radar because some of the other parts were good. And I'd always feel like when somebody, and usually Rostam would point to that one as being weak, then I'd kind of feel like the cat's out of the bag. And it was important that I had somebody to let me know. I, I've learned to pick my battles. <laughs> but it, it is, I, I mean, it's amazing what Ezra will come up with uh, just so quickly. To me, that, that is, that's amazing when we, we'll sit down and we'll, you know, we'll start with just a really simple chord progression and he, he'll be listening to it on loop, maybe with a laptop open, and suddenly there's like an entire, you know, three verses there, which is amazing to me. And, <laughs> and I'll be like, all right, what you got? It's time to share. <laughs> so he'll share it. And I'll be like, I love everything except for that word. Can we please change that word? <laughs> and, uh, and like he said, usually he'll be like, okay, if you, don't, if you really hate this word, then there's probably something wrong with it. So. Well, all right. Um, how long do you think you can do this? Is this, uh, can, can you imagine you'll be doing this for the next decade? We've had a joke about, I think almost as long as we've been a band, a joke about diversifying and moving into non-music related ventures. <laughs> but as a band, I don't even remember what the original <laughs> version of the joke was, but it was like, just, you know, because we did incorporate in the early days, so we are, you know, a limited liability corporation, so we're ready to <laughs> move into other fields. Um, but so far it is going well. Um, <laughs> I think, well, it's been interesting because in the past two years, we've had quite a bit of time off, and which is not to say that we haven't all been thinking about music and thinking about the album and songwriting and all that, but it's made me feel like there's no reason why in the future we can't go do other things and come back to this. So that's, that's the ideal. That you can always have it there. Yeah, I think you would have to be insane to, to tour the way we've toured into your 30s and 40s, never stop. It would be like impossible to, yeah. to be a functioning human being, but I do think it is possible to hopefully hit that middle ground where the band is a constant that we can come back to when we're feeling excited and when we have the right ideas, because it's certainly not something any of us want to like fuck up by <laughs> hastily pushing out an album that we're not thrilled about, but I do think it's possible to find that middle ground where we can all pursue other interests and take time off, and then, you know, when it comes to, you know, releasing a new album, be prepared to dedicate a lot of time to it. There are microphones out here. I have one last question but um, before um, uh, you all have your chance, but you can go ahead and uh, step up to the microphones here, and I'll ask my last question, which is, who are you excited about besides your own album, <laughs> who are you excited about out there now and listening to or think we should be listening to? I've been listening to Scuba's music. He's a British guy in Berlin who makes really good techno. I've been waiting for months to drop this one. Uh, <laughs> this guy's album came out in May, uh, and I've been telling all my friends about it, but now I can finally share it with the public. <laughs> Uh, it's an album, that's not his real name, but he's playing a, something of a character called Father John Misty. And the album's called Fear Fun. Where, where, who is he and where is he? Uh, he used to play in the band called the Fleet Foxes. Okay. Uh, so he's a West Coast bro. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really awesome album, best album I've heard in a long time. Um, I know Francis and the Lights is working on a new album. I'm a fan of his work. He's, uh, if you have ever have a chance to see him live... Go, go see him. He's amazing. All right. If you want to pitch anything in, you can, Ezra. Okay. Um, <laughs> I get, at this point, he's not that new, but he hasn't actually released an album yet. But I've been 
very interested in um, ASAP Rocky, and he's a rapper, he's from New York, young guy. I always like to know what the young people are up to. <laughs> and um, he's, uh, he's a very, like, 2K12 kind of guy in that he has a very unified aesthetic from the covers of his mixtapes to, you know, the lyrics to the way the music sounds. And I don't know. That, that's, I think that's usually a good sign when an artist can have all that wrapped up. Choices are as eclectic as the group is itself. Let's go to this first microphone here. Hi. Um, I apologize because I'm sure I could just Google this, but I wanted, I wanted to know where the name Vampire Weekend came from. Sure. The name Vampire Weekend came from a movie that I started making with some friends one summer in college, kind of inspired by The Lost Boys, the classic 80s vampire film. <laughs> um, and I don't know. I don't know what was going through my head at the time, but I just thought Vampire Weekend was a great title for a movie about vampires. <laughs> and the plot of the movie involved... You, the trailer is still online somewhere. There was only enough footage for a trailer. <laughs> but the, uh, what it, one of the, the, the lines in the movie was I, I was... I played a character called Walcott, and I was watching my father die holding him in my arms, he'd just been mauled by a vampire, and he said to me, Walcott, you need to go to Cape Cod and tell the mayor that vampires are taking over the country. And I remember at the time, I thought it, was very, it seemed very funny to me that Cape Cod would have a mayor. <laughs> um, but that went on to become one of our first songs, Walcott, which we talked a little about a little bit earlier, and that had this you know, very strong, like, Cape Cod connection. That one, for whatever reason, was about getting out of Cape Cod. And I even remember just, like, at the first practice, I remember Chris and I especially just cracking up. We just thought there was something so funny about the song about Cape Cod. But uh, that's kind of how it all came together. And Vampire Weekend seemed like a natural name for the band. Um, and in some, some weird way, it still fits. I don't know why. I guess it just happens with names. They feel right <laughs> over time. Thank you. Over here. Yeah, hi. Um, first off, I think you guys are awesome. Um, also, something that really stands out, I think, about you guys is uh, your lyrics um, and how well they go with the music. I was wondering, like, do you guys consider yourselves poets or, like, storytellers? And also, if I can, like, fit in another question, um, I was wondering, like, how much confidence do you guys have in your music? So I feel like whenever, like, I write something or, like, people I know write something and they try to show it to other people, like, you know it's good if people like it. And that's like basically how it works. And like, what would your guys' reaction be if like you put out an album? I mean, this sounds terrible, but if you put out an album and like nobody liked it, no. would you still believe in it? Or what's, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That, that's a scary question to a bunch of people who are about to finish a new record. <laughs> but I, I would just say that um, for whatever reason, your question reminded me of our, some of our earliest shows where we were just playing for our friends. And that was, a lot of times, that was the impetus to write a new song. We'd be like, we have all these friends that are coming, and they're going to see the exact same show that they saw last <laughs> week, unless we have at least one new song. And for whatever reason, I felt like that experience of like really wanting to make something for this like close group of friends to be able to enjoy, it was like... It was a pretty meaningful thing. Of course, we wanted to make music that we liked ourselves too, but um, maybe it just comes down to that. And, and I imagine that you can find that in your own life too. So. 